Hi, today I want to talk about running ESXi as a nested virtualized machine inside your um, current hypervisor. And the reason is simple. If you switched from ESXi to another uh, virtualization or you're working on something and need to export it to use it at work when it's running uh, vSphere, stuff like that, You'll need ESXi. Another reason that you'll need ESXi is if you want to migrate your machines from ESXi to Proxmox or anything else, and your Windows machine and sometimes even Linux machines weren't powered off correctly, for example, if uh, the ESXi was uh, abrupt, abruptly terminated by power loss or stuff like that, then uh, you might need to restart the virtual machine under ESXi and then power it off uh, normally in order to be able to transfer it or convert it to another virtualization. Now, unfortunately, Using overt uh, slash RHV, you can run ESXi as an Astra uh, virtual machine, but there is a problem. There are actually two problems. One of them is that basically uh, there is uh, network issues. For example, if your virtual machine has a um, network card inside it, as soon as you boot the virtual machine inside the ESXi, which is running ESXi, sorry, which is running as a nested virtualization, it will uh, disconnect the ESXi entirely solution. So, for example, if you have NFS or SCSI connected to ESXi, uh, it will basically kill the connection, and you won't be able to ping or do anything to the ESXi. Uh, another problem is that uh, once you start to boot it, it just basically stuck or getting really, really slow. I don't know why, and I hardly think that either Red Hat or VMware will take care of that. So that's why I'm suggesting the Virtual Machine Manager, as you can see here, in order to run it. now. Before you um, create this virtual machine, there are few things that you'll need to take care of. One of them is when you create this virtual machine, unfortunately, Virtual Machine Manager has few quirks and you'll need to go through them. And the first one of them is uh, when you select your uh, ISO file, uh, you can select, for example, generic in terms uh, of auto detection. It won't auto detect, so select generic. Uh, don't uh, add any disks, any virtual disks. And uh, pr uh, before you click finish, click uh, the customize line there that will basically bring you uh, this window where you can uh, set things up. And uh, then you'll see this stuff, this list here almost. You'll see here probably IDE uh, disk or IDE CD-ROM. You just right click and remove them. And after you remove them, uh, click start install. I know it's empty, no disk, no CD. It, uh, it will fail. But that's okay because basically that's how you force it to create uh, the XML as Q35, which is what I forgot. Select Q35 and UFI. You can select either BIOS or it doesn't really matter. Power it on. After you power it on, it will uh, set things up and you cannot change it back. So remember to change it uh, first to Q35 before you power it on. Uh, which means click finished installation. And after you've uh, powered it on, power it off, and then we'll do the following things. Uh, as I said, select generic. Right now it doesn't matter after you click uh, begin installation. CPU, uh, 
uh, disable the check uh, button here and type host pass through don't forget to click apply or else it won't register it in the XML file put as many cores that you want memory the same uh, if you have less than 2 gigabyte in this VM it will basically crash DSXi as soon as it starts booting and showing the yellow screen so uh, use at least a gigabyte in terms of boot option you can enable the boot menu but I'm basically putting the SATA CD-ROM and uh, which brings me to this section right here uh, you'll need to add them so let's move them uh, remove them and I'll show you how to do it it's pretty simple you click here select storage you'll select your ISO uh, by the way if you have it locally you can click browse locally but I'm using a pool system so I'm clicking the VMware and I'm selecting CD-ROM SATA finish and I'll click again add hardware storage manage in the SSD ESXi choose volume this is this drive finish boot option enable the CD-ROM move it up and click apply uh, network make sure it's E1000 VMware doesn't recognize Vertio it might aid a sound we don't really need sound uh, what else uh, this is the most critical part you cannot add here in add in uh, add hardware when we're selecting controller you cannot add SATA so all this uh, loops and jumps uh, to make virtual machine manager um, create a virtual machine to run ESXi is because we don't have here a simple solution to add SATA and as we can see here there's nothing to add this function and uh, to tell the truth I'm quite surprised but c'est la vie now we see here we have a SATA controller after that we did the begin installation power off and we did the change it will create this SATA make sure you have the CD-ROM and your hard disk virtual hard disk here or else VMware will not recognize your virtual hard disk after we've done it power it on okay let's boot it by the way there are a um, few posts on the net how to install ESXi under virtual machine manager but they use the ID and the i4040FX chipset and to tell the truth uh, it's pretty slow and with this chipset it's pretty fast and I'll show you to it in a few minutes after it finished press enter F11 and it should see the hard disk it doesn't I wonder why let me check well apparently the reason was that it wants the SATA disk to be the first and then add the CD-ROM later I don't know why don't ask me but it should look like this uh, as a um, workaround I'll publish the XML file in my github page and I'll give a link so you can basically just uh, check it out and just modify your uh, where is your uh, ISO file and where is your QCOW2 file so you can just use it straight so finally let's click enter password my super secret password yeah and this host has unsupported device guess which device anyway it, it does work the installation will start and after it will finish the installation we can reboot 
and in this case I can basically disable this one, click apply, it will probably require it when it shuts down. Yeah, so yeah, don't believe this hype. Let's look at the boot menu, it is only the SATA. We can basically remove the CD-ROM and just boot. And as you can see, it's pretty fast. Okay, it's 76 for me. 192, 76. Okay, this window is too big. I wish OBS would add a frame around the thing so I can see what's the size. Proceed. Let's log in as root. And I don't want to join anything. I don't want to save the password. And let's look at the storage. I have only the local disk. Let's add NFS and let's call it NFS1 NAS2 uh, okay next finish yeah okay let's browse let's take a Windows 10 machine and register it close and as soon as I'll boot this machine, it will ask if I copied it or moved it. I'll select moved. And this is the part that boots and it's up to here. When you see those, this little wheel of dots that it's moving. Yeah, it's hard to see. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Well, as you can see, the Windows 10 has been successfully booting and there is a network interface. This part is basically where it totally crashes before that in overt and RHV. Now after you booted the machine you can basically click here shut down and now after it successfully finished and shut down you can migrate this machine to your virtualization solution and you can shut down the ESXi itself. No I don't need maintenance mode and let's see what's going on here. Yeah, it's shutting down, finished. In conclusion, you might need the SXI as a virtual machine in uh, your uh, environment if you want to either convert a work that you do at home to take to work where it's running vSphere or if you want to uh, fix problems with machines that were running under ESXi and you cannot migrate them to your current virtualization solution. Thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Good day.